Listen carefully, this show features highly trained professionals working with potentially dangerous and unpredictable animals. So please, do not attempt to do anything you're about to see yourselves. Bosh! <laughs> Did you know that now, right now, there are people all around the UK who are working their socks off to help wounded wildlife and poorly pets. <laughs> and we've managed to get VIP passes for willing helpers to get stuck in at the busiest vets, wildlife sanctuaries and rescue centres. Rats! It's tough and dirty work, but somebody's got to do it. <laughs> on today's show, Owen and Mason try to get an injured woodpecker better. Oh, go on, little fella, you give it some. Jordan and Bethany show us Sean the donkey's bumpy back. They make feels lumpy and bumpy and scabby. And Dom's on for a shocker of a crock feeding frenzy. Wait, I don't like it when he's moving towards us. What does that mean? Oh, McDonald had a farm. No, he didn't. What? McDonald, he didn't have a farm. He just reckoned he did. No farm? No farm. How'd you know that? Met him. He's not even old. And he's a woman. A woman? Are you thinking of the right person? I think so. You know, Scottish farmer, loads of animals. Ah, no, sorry, I was thinking of someone else. <gasps> Today I'm in East Sussex where I'll be working alongside the Wildlife Rescue and Ambulance Service. Well, when I say I'll be working alongside, what I actually mean is I'll be watching. It'll be these two doing all the work. Drive on. Meet dudes, Owen and Mason. Mason thinks his fish is fab, and his budgie is a beauty. But he's looking to extend his pet collection. I want a cub lion, and I want a, I want a dog as well. Owen, on the other hand, dances to a different tune. He already has two dogs and two big horses. But how do you feel about handling spiders, Owen? I would fall on the floor, and I would probably pass out if I saw one. And what's your wildlife knowledge like, chaps? Me and Owen went over the park and we thought that <laughs> we thought there was a gorilla and we chased after it and it turned out to be a deer. A little limited then. We can work on that. Swing over to East Sussex and we'll get going. Ah, oh, Owen Mason, good to meet you both. Now, are you ready to get your sleeves rolled up? Oh no, you ain't got none. Uh, but are you ready to help British wildlife today? Yes. 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 Now, I've heard that you're experts on British wildlife, correct? No. No, of course you're not, because you wouldn't be on this programme otherwise, would you? Now, I guarantee by the end of today, though, you will know more about wildlife than you ever have. Well, before you start working with any animals, you've got to get kitted out. I've left some overalls in the back of the van seats there. Off you go. Oh, well trained. Ta -da! Ta -da! Oh, I like that, and you'll like this. RAS stands for Wildlife Rescue and Ambulance Service, and it's run by this man, Trevor Weeks. He's on call 24 hours a day to rescue a wide variety of wildlife casualties, and today Owen and Mason are joining him on the front line. So, Trevor, we are actually all on standby right now. The boys could take a phone call at any moment and rush out and, and deal with an emergency. Definitely, yeah. We're just waiting for the phone to ring. OK, is there any preparation they need to do? Well, first of all, we need to get the van loaded. The animal ambulance needs to be ready to go at a moment's notice, so it's important that it's packed up with all the necessary equipment. There are things to catch animals in. Steady, boys. Things to catch animals with. You mainly use this for helping to get small animals out of tight spaces or even snakes. And things to carry animals on. What do you use the stretcher for? Well, mainly for road casualties, especially animals that you have to be careful lifting, which could have a damaged spine. The team here have to respond to an average of 50 animal emergency calls each week. Wildlife Rescue. We have our first call out of the day. We'll be out with you shortly to come and collect it. A young bird has been injured by a cat. A concerned member of the public has tried to give it food and water, but to make sure it has the very best chance of surviving, they've called in the experts. Trevor, what kind of bird is this? Well, it's a spotted woodpecker, and there's two types of spotted woodpecker. There's the greater and the lesser. And I have a feeling that this is actually the rarer, lesser spotted woodpecker. You can see it's tucking its head under its, uh, its wing there. That's because it's in shock. So um, we need to sort of get this guy sorted quite quickly. What can we do to help him? 
Right, well, we need to get him warmed up, first of all. We need to get some food into him, and um, we're going to need to get an antibiotic into him. It's touch and go for the injured woodpecker, so the boys need to get it back to the rescue centre fast. And later, the team arrive at Animal A&E with their woodpecker. He seems to be taking the liquid, though, doesn't he? Yeah. Which is, always is that a good thing? Yeah. It's a good sign that he's taking it and he's swallowing. But first, Dom surrounds himself with four-legged friends. Today on Dick and Dom Go Wild, I'm at the Donkey Sanctuary in Sidmouth in Devon. Meet Bethany and Jordan. Bethany ain't big on animals of any sort. She's not even keen on her own cat. I don't know, I just feel like my cat's got it in for me. Any living things you really can't stand, Bethany? That would have to be donkeys and horses. Hmm, Jordan loves her cat and all sorts of other stuff. And her home is full of pets. And thankfully for me, she loves horses and donkeys. You can ride them, you can feed them, you can actually brush them. They're really cute, so I don't see what's wrong with them. Right, trot on to Devon, girls. We have work to do. Jordan, Bethany, welcome to Go Wild. Jordan, you're a donkey lover, aren't you? Yeah. You're a donkey kisser. And you are a donkey disser. You don't like them. No. Why? Because I don't like the noise they make. They're braying. Yes? Yeah. That's the name for the <laughs> noise they make. They go <laughs> like a hinged door, yeah? Yeah. All right, then. Uh, Jordan, do you think we can uh, turn her around throughout the course of today? Do you yeah. think we can turn her into a donkey kisser, a donkey lover? Yeah. All right, then. Well, we're certainly in the right place. Let's have a they currently care for over 7,030 four-legged friends and never turn away a sick, injured or abandoned donkey. Whenever possible, they try to find them nice new homes. Well, you look, uh, you look, uh, you look ready. Do you feel ready? No. Yeah. How do you feel? Scared. Really? I mean, look at, look at the lovely four-legged animals. They look all right, don't they? Good floppy faces, stupid waggling ears. You'll be right, won't you? No. Or will she? <gasps> The donkeys in this enclosure arrived from overseas around three months ago. They're not used to human contact and have taken a bit of time to settle in. If they're going to be rehomed, they'll need to get used to people. And that's where our team come in. What we're going to do is we're going to crouch down and see if the donkeys come and see us. And if we do it this way, then we're being really passive and gentle and they're just being a little bit nosy and they'll come and see who we are and what we're all about. Here he comes now. All he's doing is checking us out. And now you can give him a little stroke. Mm -hmm. Feel how soft this part of his nose is. Mm. Oh, whoa, it's nostrils. Good start, Bethany. And Jordan's plainly loving giving these once unwanted donkeys a bit of TLC. It might take a little more time for Bethany, though. Don't panic, but you've got one behind you. <laughs> Girl, nice and gently. <laughs> They're all round you. You feel OK? No. <laughs> All right, I'm going to stand up very gently then, so we don't frighten them. <laughs> OK, I've got you. You're fine. Can I give him another little smile? Yeah. Good girl. Why are these donkeys here? Well, they've come from our, one of our donkey sanctuary farms in Ireland, where we're completely full. We've got so many donkeys that um, we've had to bring some over to the UK. Because what we're trying to do is find private homes for them, and we can send them out in pairs to live with a family. The girls have done a great job helping these wary donkeys get used to people, and that can only increase the donkeys' chances of finding new homes. And later, Bethany and Jordan find a room to groom a donkey in. Back in East Sussex, Owen and Mason are returning from an urgent wildlife call-out. They've rescued a lesser-spotted woodpecker that's been attacked by a cat. The bird's life is in serious danger, so the boys rush it straight through to the emergency room where senior carer Sue is ready and waiting. How bad is he? He's very, very cold, very lethargic. Right. And you know that, that can obviously be down to body temperature, but if they get too cold, their system will start to shut down. So the key thing is, is to get, try and get the temperature raised. Is this a common thing to get woodpeckers in here? This is the second one we've had in this week. Oh, right, OK. What are the chances at the moment? Probably less than 50-50 at the moment. We can get a better idea once we've managed to raise the body temperature. Once we've done that, we can start trying him on some more solids, i.e. mealworms. Ooh. 
Oh, go on, little fella. You give it some. He seems to be taking the liquid, though, doesn't he? Yeah. Which is always is that a good sign. thing? It's yeah. a good sign that he's taking it and he's swallowing. It really is so pretty. The poor pecker is in shock. Sue has put a special heated pad in his basket to help bring him around. How long are you going to leave him in there for? He'll stay in here on the heat for half an hour. So we'll know after half an hour whether he's we'll going to be any better. After half an hour, you'll see, hopefully we'll see an improvement in him and he'll be a little bit not more lively and That's not good. quite so wobbly. So, boys, your first rescue, what do you think? Um, pretty wicked because we think we've saved the life of a lesser spotted woodpecker and it will be just relief if he survives. Right, fingers crossed, everything crossed for the lesser spotted woodpecker. Yeah, fingers crossed. Good luck, buddy. And later, Owen and Mason head over to fill up a hungry fawn. She's sort of head-butting because she wants more. <laughs> Back to Devon now, and we're getting down with the donkeys. Outside, the heavens have opened, so Jordan and Bethany have moved indoors so they can complete their donkey grooming work. So, why can't donkeys be groomed or brushed when they're wet? Because they don't actually have a waterproof coat, and if you brush them when they're wet, it rubs the water down into their skin and can make them sore. Make sure you're only doing the dry bits today, so under the tummy and down the legs. And then when the brush gets full of hair, then you use the other one, that's right, to get the <laughs> hair out. And while the girls get to grips with the grooming, we can play Dom's Dazzling Donkey Quiz. <laughs> to join in at home, simply decide which one of the following statements are true. Statement A. When a donkey and a zebra mate, the offspring is called a zadonk. Statement B. There are more donkeys in China than there are people in Scotland. Or statement C. Donkeys have such good memories, they can recognise another donkey that they haven't seen for 25 years. Choose your answer now. Time's up, and the answer is... They're all true! And another thing that's true is that Jordan and Bethany have almost finished their grooming. Donkeys like having their coats brushed. They do, they love it, because naturally, they if you watch donkeys in the wild, they groom each other, they scratch each other all over. And so when we're looking after them, we have to do that for them. It's looking like dealing with donkeys gets a thumbs up from Jordan. It's been a good experience, because I haven't ever groomed a donkey or a horse before. So it's been a really good experience. And Bethany has really surprised herself. I didn't think I'd be at all pleased to find out that I'd be Creaming a donkey this morning, but now I don't really mind. Nice one, Bethany! And later, it gets hairy when the team have to handle Sean the scabby donkey. It's like massaging my mother's feet. <laughs> hairy and crusty. <laughs> but first, Dom fixes supper for a snapper. Oh, oh, oh! If you come as a life size Bob the Builder. No, this is protection. I've heard that this place here is home to some of the world's most dangerous animals. I'm not stupid. We'll be fine. I've heard today that all you're going to be doing is feeding a reptile. Oh, great. Easy. Ah, do you know what's going to be on the menu? Us. Look, just calm down and keep it under your hard hat, because I've heard this reptile is one of the smallest of its kind. Piece of peasy. This is Kid Croc, an African dwarf crocodile. Yep, he's small, but he's got a massive appetite. Ah! Oh! Wait, where's my phone? Whoa. Where's my phone? I need to call me dad. Your father? Why? Is he good with crocodiles? No, he's a taxi driver. I need to get home. Hello? This is a perfect opportunity for Dom to overcome his crocodile fears. Kid was an unwanted pet until reptile expert Mark took him in. Dwarf crocs will scoff just about anything meaty they can fit into their mouths. Fish, shellfish, even rats. Chicks are on the menu today, though. How's it feel, mate? It's uh, powerful. It's got really, really powerful jaws. And it grabs onto the pole and just nearly pulls you in. Right, I don't like it when he's moving towards us. What does that mean? He's hungry. Get in his garb, hurry up! All right! He's going to be after your leg in a minute. Ten chicks later and Kid is all filled up. Anyway, time now for the next job. Next job. Yep. Uh 
over in Devon, Bethany, who arrived as a donkey disliker, and Jordan, who loves them, continue to be busy at the sanctuary. Well, this is Sean, and Sean's a donkey that's been at the sanctuary for about five years, and he's got a problem with his skin, and what we have to do is massage him with a special medicated shampoo to get the scabs out of his coat. Mmm, fancy massaging donkey scabs? No. No. Things could get a little messy now. Our girls aren't my keen on this job, but Sean really needs that itchy matted coat of his scrubbing. It feels horrible. I know, it feels all lumpy and it feels, scabby. It feels nice when you're shampooing it in, but it doesn't feel nice when there's no, no shampoo on this section. Yeah, it's yeah. like... It like feels lumpy and bumpy and scabby. It's like massaging my mother's feet. <laughs> all hairy and crusty. It's all important work, though. What would happen, Sean, if you didn't shampoo him? Well, the scabs would build up and build up on his skin, and then they'd crack, ah. and then he'd bleed. Aye. So we need to keep them nice and soft and supple and, and keep his skin in good condition. It's a bit not very nice, but I suppose it is helping a lot. So you're prepared to put up with the ickiness of it for the donkey's sake, yeah? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> very good, very good. Done. One scab free, scrubbed up, soapy smelling, delighted donkey. Yeah, that's brilliant. Well done. You've got all those scabs off. That feels really smooth. Great job, girls. Well done. Time for a rinse. Oh! <laughs> it looks like I'm peeing myself now! <laughs> you made it look like I'm peeing my trousers! Oi, that was Rinse Shaw, not me. Well, at least you don't have to dry him by hand. Oh, yeah, apologies, you do. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's one very clean, very dry, very happy donkey, and one very wet, miserable, Marty donkey. All right, so look, here's my towel. Dry my arms. Thank you. Neck. Back. All right, that'll do. I'm off for a run around the paddock. See ya. <laughs> As the day goes on, I'm starting to like donkeys a lot more because I'm helping them, so it makes me feel, see them in a different point of view. Shampooing a donkey has got to be one of the weirdest things I've ever done in my life. And later, the girls discover that doting on donkeys has its ups and its downs. Go, oh, 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 in East Sussex, Owen and Mason have been on the road with an animal ambulance service. It's now time for the team to check on Dolly and Dottie, a pair of five-week-old rescued fallow fawns recovering from nasty injuries. They need oodles of hands-on care until they're healthy enough to return back to the wild. And our boys are dishing out a serving of delicious formula milk. Perfect, because it's as close as they can get to what Mum would provide in the wild. Looks like Dolly's really hungry. Oh, dear. What's the sound effects for? She's doing that because she wants more, you see, because you're running out of milk. She's sort of head-butting because she wants more. <laughs> nice job, Owen. And now lunch is over, there's a very rare opportunity for the boys to get even closer to a tiny fallow deer fawn. So, Trevor, this is a deer that you rescued. How much more treatment does it need until it goes back into the wild? Well, hopefully it doesn't need too much more treatment. But unfortunately, because it hasn't got its mum to look after him, then we're going to have to be its foster parents and then wait till it's much bigger before it could be released back into the wild. How is it? It's brilliant. Is it? It's brilliant. That's actually be next to a deer that's very small and it's very cute. Is it afraid? It's sucking its finger. I know. Ace, nice. how does it feel to have your finger being chewed off by a little deer? It feels really good and it isn't really hurting either. It's not hurting. No. You don't mind being this close? Yeah, it's really nice. Cool. <laughs> oh. <laughs> he likes noses, chins and lips too. <laughs> Guys, do you think this is the best animal you've ever met? Yeah. Yeah. It's a cool, it's a cool little deer. Yeah, so definitely. Happily. Dolly the deer's head wound seems... Hang on a minute, why am I whispering? Happily, Dolly the deer's head wound seems to be healing nicely, and thanks to Owen and Mason, she has a nice full belly of warm milk. Time to stretch those legs now. Goodbye and good luck, Dolly. Right now I feel speechless because it's, like, so awesome. Um, I, can't, I don't know how to say it. It was just awesome. I never ever thought I'd get close to a deer because they are really shy animals and I always used to think British wildlife is just really boring but now I know it is really, really exciting. 
And later, our boys are called to a boxed fox in a fix. If it wasn't for you guys, would it have died? Definitely, yeah. That's amazing. But first, Dick's pet kicks up a right old stink. Ah, so you got your cat then. How's he settling in? Oh, you mean Stinky? Yeah, he's beautiful. Very affectionate. Although he has been acting a bit strange recently. All oh, right, well, well, why's that then? Well, he's not drinking any milk, he doesn't purr, and dogs run away from him. In fact, everyone runs away from him. Oh, and it blooming reeks. Oh. Ah, uh, that's because your cat is a skunk. Yeah, no wonder it stinks. I and mean, it's got a couple of glands either side of its bum, and it squirts out of them every time it gets scared or senses danger to protect itself. Uh, mm. Well, I love Stinky Me, so I'm keeping him. Oh, right. OK, well, uh, good luck trying to find the right pet food, because uh, in the Americas where they live, as well as eating berries, nuts and leaves, they actually eat bees. OK, this lovely thick coat stops them from getting stung, but and they do get stung in the mouth occasionally. But it, it doesn't stop them. A bee-eating cat. It is not a cat! You're talking absolute twaddle. Watch. Over in Sidmouth, Bethany and Jordan are working at a massive sanctuary that looks after donkeys. They now face the challenge of preparing Twinkle and Rosie for the journey to their new home that will hopefully be taking place in a few days' time. Right, well, the donkeys are looking lovely and groomed. Also, this horse box is looking great. And now it's the important bit, right? Yeah. Why is this so important? Well, donkeys naturally are worried about going into a confined space. We practice loading them and travelling them so that when we come to take them on their journey to their foster home, they're comfortable and they, when they arrive, then they're nice and relaxed and not at all stressed about it. So this is quite a big thing for them? Yeah. Girls, do you think you can do it? Yeah. I'm not sure. Not sure? Why not? Because I'm just worried about if the donkey will back buck or anything. Well, I reckon as a team we can do it, yeah? Let's get to it. This trial run is a test to see if the donkey pals are happy entering a trailer and travelling in a closed box. If they get the jitters, it could delay their move to a new home. Just letting her have a look at the ram. Up you come. Hey, hey touch oh, oh, hello. Not, sure. not a great start. Twinkle is clearly nervous. Come on, <laughs> try again. And a little tug on the rope just to encourage her to come forward. Uh -huh. there go. Go on, donkey so face. We're not rushing it. We're letting her have a look. She can take her time. It's weird. Um, even though they haven't got facial expressions, you can tell she's slightly anxious. How's the other donkey getting on? She's fine. She's raring to go. Oh, is she? Yeah. So we might try the other one around. Annie decides it's better for the more confident Rosie to lead the way. Hopefully, she'll help encourage her best pal Twinkle to follow. Well, that's how you do it. Hey, <laughs> oh, look at done. that. Come on, Twinkle, let's be having you. She's going to load herself. Mm -hmm. Look at that. So I'm not pull I didn't ask her, I didn't pull her. Yeah. Oh. I think she got bored of my conversation. That's it. Yeah, you can push her bum round with the gate. Are we all in? You're all in. Okay. Yeah, animals in, humans out, gate closed. They are. Look. Happy donkeys. And there you go. Two donkeys on the move and not in the slightest bit bothered about travelling in a trailer. Job done. Well, Twinkle and Rosie seem very happy with their little journey in preparation for their big journey. But what about your journey? How was it, Jordan? It was great. Yeah? Beth, what about you? How was uh, the whole experience? Well, it's certainly changed my opinion on donkeys around. OK. And uh, what about the old... <laughs> oh, you still scared of that? I'm not scared of the old donkey. The old what? Old donkey. Hear the noise? I can. Do it. I can. You do it. <laughs> no. Do it. No. Just make a donkey noise. You. It's a perfect way of ending this piece. You. OK, I'll do it. <laughs> Back in East Sussex, Owen and Mason have got access all area passes to a busy rescue centre and animal hospital. Earlier today, they were called to a wildlife emergency and brought back a young bird injured in a cat attack. The chances of the youngster surviving were slim. Right then, boys, let's find out what the update is on the woodpecker. So, Sue? Afraid I've got some bad news. Unfortunately, he didn't make it. Uh, the problem with cat-attacked birds, they suffer internal crush injuries, so even though they look absolutely fine on the outside, 
we don't know what's going on inside, so, so unfortunately on this occasion, mm. yeah, he didn't make it. How do you feel, boys? Sad. Sad, upset, unhappy, emotional. Unfortunately, this is all part of the job. Working with wildlife doesn't always involve happy endings. The sad news makes our brave boys even more determined. And it's not long before they are back on the job with another rescued youngster in need of their help. This poor little chap came into us as a road casualty. Now, he almost died. He'd been hit on the chest by a car and all his chest was bruised uh, and we thought he might have even had internal bleeding. Thankfully, this plucky fox has now made a full recovery and today he's taking the first steps on his journey back into the wild. If it wasn't for you guys, would it have died? Definitely, yeah. Us uh, working with our local vets um, have saved this fox's life. Wow. That's amazing. The fox is pretty nervous, so the team get the edgy animal into the ambulance quickly and calmly. Within seconds, we're on the road again. So, Trevor, we're not actually releasing the fox into the wild today. Where, where are we going to be putting it? Well, this fox will go into, like, a halfway house. It's got to acclimatise, get used to being outdoors again um, and get used to being out here at night with other foxes, other animals, um, before we can release it back to the wild. So when you put other foxes in with other foxes, do they tend to get on well? Most of the time they do, but we do have to be careful here that they don't start having a fight. So what do we do next with Mr Fox? Right, we'll take him in the cage and we'll get him released. The cage is open and Mr Fox makes a run for it. Now, he might not look too happy with his new surroundings, but this is exactly what we needed to see. He's quite skitty at the moment, is that normal? That's, that's a really good sign because it means he's ready to go back to the wild. He's nice and feisty, nice and wild, and he's going to survive really, really well once released as a result. Good lad. Right, we best get out of here. So, lads, when you got here this morning, you didn't know much about wildlife. Do you think you've learned a lot about British wildlife today? Yes. And do you think being an animal rescue helper is a worthwhile job? Yeah, I do. Mm, good. Uh, what's been your favourite animal, Owen? Foxes and the deers, because the deers are cute and the foxes are funny. You? Well, I think the same, the foxes and the deers, because the foxes are really, like, funny and the deers are so cute and I'd have one as a pet. And there we have it, ladies and gentlemen, another two converts to Dick and Dom go wild. <laughs> I can't believe you made me brush that croc's teeth. Never again. I'm sorry I ran off, OK? There is another croc that needs its choppers shining, so uh, I'll brush the teeth, but you hold it, yeah? You've got to be joking. Where's he off to? <laughs> oh, Dave, I didn't mention you were only a baby, did I? <laughs>